next patron question is from Anne. What are your thoughts on uh, Yaomi Park and how communists in the West seem to want to discredit her? So for those who don't know, Yaomi Park is a um, North Korean defector. And she's since moved to the United States and she's written a book and she has a YouTube channel. I think it's called like the voice of North Korea with Yaomi Park and um, her activism focuses around um, raising awareness about how horrendous things are in North Korea. Um, Cause she's a rare example of someone who's, you know, able to get out and have a spot, a big spotlight. So, um, now, to be clear, I personally do not know about specific criticisms that communists have of her. So I'm going to speculate about what those criticisms would be, right? Um, I think um, uh, that she works with a lot of just right-leaning people, like a lot of conservative people. Um, and I'm not going to do the whole thing where you say like, oh, this person is just being used by the right because that's really demeaning. Um, and also makes it seem like she is like, doesn't have awareness. Um, but like working with Prager U, I'm a little bit like, uh, um, or so, but that kind of working with those kinds of people are going to, um, it's, it's going to put people who are on the left like a, a bad taste in their mouth. And unfortunately, they're not might not be likely to listen to the other stuff that you have to say, um, like guilt by association, which I think is um, too bad. And it's a real problem because just because she 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 like many activists like has a message that she wants to get out desperately and will take the opportunity of people platforming her letting her share her story like as often as possible there okay like, no, I, yeah I, so okay, finish finish your um story. what i was gonna say is that uh that shouldn't completely discredit everything else she has to say. I know she has a lot of like criticisms about like critical race theory and wokeness that, um, I, that has some, it like brings up memories for her of how she was raised in terms of like this totalitarian ideology. Um, and it, I, I don't know what communists like specifically say against her. I would assume they would like bring up all those people she, she associated with to like as a mark against her. Um, but if they're trying to like criticize her because she's like what she says about North Korea, they're probably just delusional. I don't know. No, what actually, you think. Okay, yeah, actually, actually, this is not just communists. Oh, I was just looking at this when I was when you were t talking. It seems like other people that are not communists have serious issues with her stories, um, reporting inconsistencies in her stories. Um, like, you know, if somebody is like criticizing her because they think like that North Korea is not a horrible place because they're communists, um, that's those people are delusional and supporting a dictatorial regime. That's one thing, but doesn't mean that just because somebody is rightfully bringing attention to how bad North Korea is that because because we agree that North Korea is a horrible place um, where, where the greatest human rights violations are happening, that means any, anybody reporting it is reporting it accurately is possible that somebody is exaggerating or um being hyperbolic just because of the attention they they're giving again i'm not saying that the, the reports of the inconsistencies are correct i'm just saying like i'm just look just spending like 30 seconds looking at this i can see that the sources are not just like far lefty communist twitter accounts i can see some of these reports are from legit journalists i'm not saying these legit these journalists are like correct i'm just saying like they might be you you, you might want to take it a little bit these accusation more seriously given that it's not just like some tankies that are defending north korea or saying that right um you know I, again i'm not accusing her of lying i'm just saying like the accusations need to be taken a little bit more seriously like we can't just dismiss it outright it might be true it might not be true however at the end of the day, we don't rely on reports by, um, how do you spell, say her, yeah, you know me, Park, right? Yeah. We don't rely on, 
Yomi Yomi Park. We don't rely on her stories uh, to know the situation in North Korea because again, her stories, as if they're true, should be listened to. Um, I mean, even if it's not true, they should be listened to and um, and research and um, you know checked and everything. However, we don't like these are anecdotal stories with no evidence to back it up. So what we use to know that North Korea is one is the worst um, is one of the worst um, places for, to be alive is based on credible reports that have been researched and backed up with a lot of detail. Right? They go far beyond what this woman has said. Again. This woman might have is telling a story that might be true or might not be true. That's not what we use to know what's happening in North Korea. Like if you actually go and look at the way that information comes out of North Korea and the way that journalists research this and they the level of skepticism and the the level of like you know a mutual evidence that backs up other reports that they have independent from each other stories that are coming from different people that are completely separate from each other checking how much they match satellite images um it's it's it's, it's very extensive it's like it's not like oh north korea must be a great place because we have found that uh, yomi park is like has been lying right like obviously it was never dependent on that um yeah, but again, just if, I'm sure that even if if she is lying about her stories, a lot of commies will jump on that. It's not just not just commies, tankies. Okay, a lot of tankies will jump on that as a proof that any all the accusations against North Korea is a lie. But just because tankies jump on something, that doesn't mean the original accusations were wrong. It's possible that the original accusations um, are correct. Also, it is possible that memory building is happening okay sometimes somebody is not lying but it's we, our mind like when you when some you know when something dramatic has happened to you in the past um when you remember it and telling it um telling the story to others and recollecting it sometimes you're not intentionally lying but your mind is just actively you're so um you are unconsciously so eager to make it more interesting that you uh, un unintentionally fill in the gaps with things that didn't happen and you actually remember it as if they happened so you're like you're telling something that did not happen but you actually you yourself believe that this is an actual memory that you have had right so that's also a possibility i'm not saying any of these is true for her but i'm saying it's even possible that she's not lying but she's telling you something that is not true and that's particularly likely when you've been under great trauma and duress yes that's also a post. Again, all of this is possible. Don't tell us, don't go around and say that we're calling her a liar, right? I'm just telling you the things that are possible, not the things that are, I don't know which one of these, which one mm -hmm. of these versions are true, right? Yeah. And just to add on to what I was saying earlier, like, um, people who are going to be opposed to her, like they are going to jump on every single little inconsistency there is, right? And also, they're also going to jump on the fact that she does work with right-leaning people to discredit her when that might just be she's going to who's willing to talk to her and let her share what she wants to talk about, right? Like ex-Muslims had to deal with that for a really long time until they kind of carved a space for themselves. Like they were discredited well, I mean, by Well, I mean, now that she because... did the same thing, now that she carved a space for herself, she has like a giant YouTube channel right now, right? Like a very successful big, yeah. YouTube channel. So now she shouldn't go on any of these right leaning platforms unless she's going to challenge them as well. Like if, if she was desperate and nobody was having her at that time, I would could justify going on PragerU and maybe somewhere else like because nobody else was giving you an outlet. I don't think that was true, actually. Actually, no, she's not justified in going PragerU. She had like a platform on TEDx and everything, right? I, I think, think it's justified. I think it's look. Let me finish. I think it's justified for you to go on like right leaning places if like you're completely, completely censored everywhere else, and until you build your own platform. But if you have your own platform, or if you do have other places, if you do go on right leaning platform, you better go there and criticize them and challenge them as well, not just give them what they want. Okay, that's what yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And to clarify, I don't think she was on Prager U, but I remember seeing her working with Dennis Prager 
Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our Blasphemy that we continue to send you more Blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.